is crypto down? Why is crypto down? I'll tell you. XRP, Bencoin, the whole market depends on what happens with those two alts. And here's a hint. The debt ceiling crisis is not the end of the crisis. First of all, it was never a crisis. It's going to kick off the next round of problems in the banking system. How does crypto fit in? Sell in May and go away. Sell Memorial Day, go away. Remember that? Talking about that on Debate Crypto. We're going to revisit that idea. We're going to find support points. We're going to let you know what this means for your altcoins and go from there. All right. So let's let's take a moment to welcome who's on the stream. We have Telmo is here. Joe Mike, first on the stream. You are never too late, never too early. You are right on time. Raj is here. Metabice, the crypto clan. People coming on in. We are going to be live today and tomorrow just to let everybody know. Okay, I am going to, uh, Megan, Megan is back. Everybody give, Me give Megan a warm welcome in the chat. Megan is on the mend and is back with us. Welcome. Okay, I'm diving into this news, not playing around. AI can make me a musical star. I know my producer is a musician. I hope he uses AI to go to the top of the charts. That said, one of the things you have to remember with certain narratives, you know, AI can change the world. Obviously, AI can result in cost cuts. AI can help corporate performance. Okay. Well, we get that. But when the media starts picking up on it, the trend may be getting a little bit tired. I was actually thinking about NVIDIA's ability to continue to lead the stock market. Either the stock market's got to follow NVIDIA I'm not going to say NVIDIA is going down because I said that once. I'm never saying that again. What I am saying is the AI narrative that's driving, you know, that, you know, it's got the equity market in love with itself again, uh, may be coming to an end. De-risking trade with China is a risky business. A lot of times I think you've seen commodities collapsing. Okay. That's a sign that there's economic strain in China. Chinese stocks are also crashing relentlessly, crashing. Okay, so yes, we don't want to have the Chinese making all of our chips. We don't want to be dependent on a regime that's hostile to us. But here's, a, here's an interesting theme. Do we have to be as hostile to the Chinese as we are? Right? In other words, isn't it better to trade with somebody than shoot at somebody? Now, not a big fan of communists, and I have personal reasons for that, right? But, you know, economic war is the worst form of war, okay? All right, at least, at least for all people. I mean, I understand, you know, I tripped over myself there. Um, economic wars never bring what people want. Let's do it that way. They don't, okay? Let's talk about the bond market. The there is $800 billion worth of junk bonds. The legacy market is changing how they measure interest rates. Maybe a big deal, maybe not, all right? But let's say it this way. In legacy, in all markets, the thing people hate is uncertainty. Now, we all of a sudden, you know, 30 days from now, a metric called LIBOR, right, is going to be replaced. And you're going to have the junk bond market in a transition phase when I think junk bonds like real estate and, and regional banks, as everyone knows, is in trouble. The only question is, when does it get traded? Hmm. How about in 30 days when there's a little bit of uncertainty as to how to price them all? Goldman Sachs weighs fresh job cuts. You know what? As soon as I saw this, I'm like, the market's going down. As soon as I saw this, and I know this sounds small, it's not 20,000 people like Silicon Valley, but you know what? Goldman Sachs, you know, they're, they're deal makers, right? These are, these are the guys that, you know, do either mergers and acquisitions or big banking deals. When Goldman is like, you know what? We need to try to find 250 expensive people and let them go. Business has come to a standstill. This is not good for Wall Street. Right. You got a euphoric equity market and Goldman Sachs going, huh? You know what? 
the core business of Wall Street, we're, we're laying 250 people off. It, it, to me, it's not good for legacy at all. Now, NVIDIA touches a $1 trillion market cap after beating rivals to AI. So here it is, the media. Oh, NVIDIA is God. You remember the dollar was God back when, right? The dollar was God in November of last year. Now the media can't write enough. Everyone's getting rid of the dollar stories. Fade the media. We will look at legacy tech stock charts. Okay, commodities are crashing. They are crashing, except gold and silver. Gold and silver have kind of a perky bid to them as oil and food collapse. Now, of course, nobody's going to complain about oil and food collapsing, except they mean two things. One, a crash in the Chinese economy, specifically the Chinese economic growth rates. Okay, they're sensitive to that over there. The second thing it means is that the Fed has fought the last war. I got a short on my channel. Check that out. Okay. The Fed has over tightened, right? And commodity markets are cratering as inflation starts cratering. Because again, the problem going forward is with tightening liquidity conditions, which I will go into that right now with tightening liquidity conditions. Okay. Inflation falls out of bed. And then I saw this morning is I don't have the news right here in front of me, but there was a jobs number that came out that showed help wanted ads are up and the Fed's going to hike rates again with deflation beginning. The Fed always fights the last war. Now let's talk about liquidity conditions. Okay. I'm going to just put up, I'll put up, I'll put up. Okay. Let's put up the chart of ETH and talk about liquidity conditions. The debt ceiling thing is over. Now the U.S. has to begin borrowing again because the whole idea of the debt ceiling was that, you know, they couldn't, they couldn't do any more borrowing. So, you know, as, you know, this analyst I work with discussed, they had a lot more options than they appeared. They made it sound really scary. As it turned out, there was no deal. There was no negotiation. They got $4 trillion in new spending. Defense spending is $800 billion, up 3%. And then there was all this talk about changes in food stamp programs for people who were not working at my age. And, you know, the, the victories claimed on both sides were ridiculous. The bottom line is these guys just spent whatever they wanted to spend. And going back to Dalio, right? You know, the debt ceiling sets a, dis a disastrous financial collapse. Now, I know that's not exactly rosy stuff, right? Um, you know, a lack of effective restraint on spending spells trouble ahead. Now, here's the cr liquidity crunch. Uncle Sam has to borrow $800 billion right away. Okay, that's going to push everybody out who's got to borrow money. Every, every, all the money in the financial system is headed for Uncle Sam. They're going to borrow it all. They're the first in line. So how's everyone else going to borrow money? How are banks that borrowed money, how are they going to pay the Fed back? They borrowed money from the Fed in March. They may have to pay it back. How are they going to do that? Who's going to lend them money? Who's going to lend commercial real estate funds money? Right? Now, if that starts, everyone's going to go, well, I don't want, I don't want to own bank stocks. I'm going to sell. I don't want to own junk bonds. I'm going to sell. You know, I'm, I'm a little worried about my stock portfolio. It's gone up, but I, I want to take the profits. I want to sell. Now, crypto. Crypto could get caught in a liquidity crunch or not. Speculative assets like altcoins cannot do well in this environment. They can't. Now, they can do well in July after the crunch is over. But for right now, they're, they're caught. So you got these little altcoins caught in this like, I don't know, tidal wave or stampede of a rush for money, right? There, there isn't enough money for altcoins. Now, let's go to the student loan thing. I don't know if I have that here, okay? But the student loan repayment plan is back, okay? People have to start repaying student loans, which means that people who speculated in crypto with their student loan payments may have to sell crypto or 
there's less money available to speculate in crypto with student loan payments back on. Okay, something to think about. Okay, Nansen cuts 30% of its staff, a very pricey research service, I thought, even during the bull market. Does crypto success depend on the upcoming presidential election? I'm going to give it to you very simple, okay? You're going to have far left, right? That's probably whoever runs in place of Biden because, you know, it's the worst kept secret in Washington that that guy can't run again. RFK in the middle, DeSantis on the right, and Trump in, a, in sort of a zone of his own, all right? You know. DeSantis is going to do well on crypto and probably not good on social issues. RFK stole the show on crypto at Bitcoin Miami. And we don't know where Trump is on social issues or crypto. My guess is the two guys in the relative center, DeSantis and RFK Jr. are going to fight for the crypto vote. Whoever gets the crypto vote wins. Right. That leads, that makes 2024 a year where you want to grab crypto before these guys get on the tape. Now, I know that's a year away. Okay. But Twitter has changed the game and they may start getting on the tape now. So if you see Gensler push back against crypto, you may see RFK on the tape pushing for crypto. I think this is going to be a positive development in July. Okay, we're also going to talk more about the Chinese stock market. We're going to talk about when people come to crypto. Right? A lot of people think Chinese retail is coming in June. I don't think so. Bitcoin headed for the first monthly loss in six months. So it's a down candle and all of a sudden everybody's going, oh my God. Now, this bothers me. And this, I think, massively benefits XRP if the market remains range bound. Okay, basically the Bitcoin, the Bitcoin token standard, let's call it, okay, is allowing people to transfer inscription to the Bitcoin network. Okay, so you can create, you can move your Ethereum-based NFTs to the Bitcoin network. Now, as I understand it, you can inscribe your NFT into a Satoshi or Satoshi's which means, you know, they can't cancel your contract. They can't shut your NFT off. You can't contract, just can't disappear, go illiquid or go empty. As I understand it, right? They, they literally burn it into the proverbial blockchain of Bitcoin. This could jam the Bitcoin network, right? I don't know if Bitcoin's got the developers to be able to handle this if the entire wave of ETH NFTs wants to come over to Bitcoin. Does this make Bitcoin more or less attractive as a transactional currency? I don't know. Long term, I don't think so. But short term, this could feel like a disturbance to me. This doesn't feel like a Bitcoin positive short term. It doesn't. Now, let's say I'm wrong about that because I hope I am. This could be the moment where you could have XRP because of the speed that XRP can move at. Let's remember, and anything that's going on now based on GAN cycle work can expand, right? So NVIDIA expanded to a trillion dollars, right? Um, you had something with a retailer and a beer manufacturer. You had that expand into something that created huge corporate losses. This is, and of course, there's going to be this banking crisis, which is also going to expand. If Bitcoin expands as like an NFT transactional platform, I don't think it's bullish short term. Okay. Crypto traders need to pay attention to China. Yes. Yeah, so China may start printing to lower the value of its currency to try to make the dollar go up. So they want their currency down and the dollar higher. Traders also need to pay attention to the dollar because, again, if people can't borrow dollars, they may start buying dollars, right? In other words, there's only two ways to get the U.S. dollar. You got to borrow it from somebody or you got to take euros, yen, or Bitcoin and trade it in 
right? And if people start buying the dollar, it's a sign that there's a liquidity crunch that Uncle Sam is the word in economics is crowding everybody out. So the answer to why is crypto down has almost nothing to do with crypto. It really has to do with the fact that the government's got to buy a ton of money. Financial conditions are getting really tight, right? And that doesn't support all speculative assets. It doesn't, okay? $275 million in ETH burnt this month, okay? So you can draw a picture where ETH could go to 1500 I'll leave it up there. Again, you want to fade the media, right? The media is like, oh my God, look at how much ETH has been burnt. Yeah, but what if the whole meme coin craze comes to a crashing halt? Then what? Right now, we are going to talk about Ben because I think you got these are the four coins Bitcoin, obviously, ETH, right? XRP, right? Does the market feel the need for speed? Okay. Also, is, is Ripple Inc. the seller? What do I mean by that? Well, when XRP goes up, who sells? Retail's the buyer. Who's the seller? Now, one of the things that they say in the institutional world, at least a friend of mine does, is that, you know, Ripple is essentially not a nice group of people. That XRP is pumped to retail. Ripple Inc. sells XRP to pay for legal bills or whatever. And, you know, Ripple Labs continues to function primarily as a place where central banks build central bank digital currencies, which we all know, you know, are going to result in nothing good for humanity. So XRP going up just became really important to me, right? Because I want to see if XRP goes up, whether it can buck the trend. I've seen one coin markets before. This is XRP's time to become the one coin market. Take down the SEC. RFK is hopefully coming. Right? Let's see XRP go up because I don't want to see some big XRP seller up there. I don't. Now, this whole crypto market could suck because I did say sell in May and go away, but I want to see XRP outperform. And I think if it does, that is telling you something about where that could go. Because it, like I said, with the Jupiter seasonals, whatever gets rolling, right, can keep on rolling. So literally, this is a big moment for XRP, right? Everyone's like, oh, the lawsuit. I know you're going to think I'm crazy, but whatever's going on with seasonals and GAN and Jupiter, it's like, you know, if, if XRP is going to have its moments, like, okay, the lawsuit's settled. Is, is that not anticlimactic, right? The thing is, do people want XRP for a reason? Speed. Is XRP money? That's number two. And three, is Ripple Inc. the big seller? And if there's no big seller and people feel the need for speed and it's time to go Jupiter, well, okay, XRP Army, this is your chance. This is it, right? Assuming crypto doesn't fall out of bed and even if it does, does, does XRP outperform? Now, continuing with the news, we're going to go to Ben later. PayPal Ventures leads $52 million round Okay, for a non-custodial wallet infrastructure. So PayPal knows that when the banking system blows up, you know, they're going to need as much crypto capability for their customers as they can. Okay, again, find Satoshi Labs rolls out AI tool that turns selfies into NFTs. You know, uh, <laughs> kind of love this. Uh, you know, if you've ever wanted a Notorious Bill NFT or you think one of those might sell, do let me know, okay? Do let me know, okay? Former SEC chief warns influencer about prosecution for crypto price manipulation, okay? To try and get an idea as to what's happening here, Ben Armstrong, who I know, BitBoy, uh, is trending on Twitter again, okay? Somebody's saying, you know, He's the Trojan horse for the whole system, it looks like. I was like, wow. Okay. Now, I'm and I'm going to stop. This. I'm going to just like skip this. So NFT Burn Wallet is asking, is Ben a buy? Okay. So from a, from a tactical trading point of view, we caught this on the way up. One of my analysts did. Now, let's talk about Ben. This is a four-hour chart. So 
people may remember this from the old days, but this is, you know, start, stop, start, stop, start, stop. Okay. Normally when you get that type of behavior, okay. In Elliott wave terms, that's called a series of ones and twos. And that eventually leads to a more impulsive three wave up. All right. Now, <clears throat> our work, okay, as in me and Toby's work, seems to indicate that, you know, this is going to stabilize and make a base, right? That all this hate for BitBoy, right? It's almost like it provides like an underlying bid because it keeps focus on the coin. The coin doesn't disappear. It doesn't lose mind share because again, you know, everybody is after BitBoy regarding whatever happens with this. Now they've released a roadmap and BitBoy is probably going to buy them enough time to execute. Now I would be a lot more interested in this if it was above the 62% retracement of the last ramp which just using the last four numbers is 1423. However, this is holding the 78% retracement at 1030. Frankly, I think that's good. That's got to hold. So I know this is a four hour chart and I think it's pretty simple. People don't like this coin and they may not like BitBoy. Okay. Well, you know, BitBoy didn't get where he was because he's an idiot, right? Now, this coin, if people start hating it and it actually bases, right, that's going to be the key. Two keys for all coins. Can XRP rally when the, uh, the rest of the crypto market stalls? Like if crypto goes into a range or finds a new range, can XRP outperform? That's question number one, even if the market's going lower. Question number two is, can Ben hold 1030? Or are there people willing to buy the dip in Ben, which is what I'm saying. Now, to answer the question, do you want to buy this? My answer is, let this market prove itself, right? There's a huge Telegram group. I've seen BitBoy tweeting out when there are big buyers of this coin. Institutions may have to buy this coin if they miss the meme coin craze. I mean, BitBoy has put the fundamentals out there, but that's a wait and see thing. Let someone big come in and buy this coin. Because as I always say, it's not a bull market unless you can buy a dip and make money. Okay. It's not. All right. Let's, let's take a look at, let's take a look at additional news, but let's welcome who's here on the stream. Robert Wiley. Okay. Sold his position. Jeff says, I'm definitely late. Jeff, you are right on time. Okay. Can't pronounce the name, but he's saying Ben scam. All right. So BitBoy is, is taking a lot of heat. And like I said, you don't want to see that support point break. Okay. G Money 79, welcome. Steve J wants me to look at REQ. I will check it out. Okay. Saying Ben pocketed 14 million from it. Okay, well, you know, <clears throat> that may be the case, but the project still got to hold up because the whole meme coin space depends on it, right? And if he pocketed $14 million from it and it goes bad, the government's not going to let him keep that, but I'm going to, I'm going to leave that out of it, right? In other words, <clears throat> you know, he's, he's taken a lot of risk there, right? But, you know, the only way to, to, to have a, a tremendous upside is to take tremendous risk, right? He's taking huge risk that that project can execute. Okay. Let's see who else we got here. Bullish on parade. Okay. Silas, Ronnie can't see my screen. Hopefully I was sharing. Okay. Rinky donk here. Welcome. Right, Silas, Steve J, Bypass Barry, welcome to the show. Okay, all right. Hedge funds are deploying chat GPT to handle all the grunt work. Okay, 
U.S. job opening surged to 10.1 million. You know, when it comes to this, you can believe it or not believe it, but the government is the one who comes out with this, right? Andre is asking how long in this range. All right. So with that said, let's go to PowerPoint. Changing my mind here. Okay. Now, China A, A share, A S A S H R is the U.S. symbol. China A fifty in trading view. This is the Chinese domestic stock market. Okay, and as you can see, it's going down sharply. Okay, our stock market did okay. Okay, theirs is falling out of bed. Now, a lot of people think that there's a lot of Chinese buyers. Hong Kong's going to open up Bitcoin to Chinese buyers starting June 1. Okay, maybe they all dump their stock market and come into Bitcoin. However, Chinese are gamblers. They love momentum on the upside, right? Chinese investors, from my experience with A shares, they want to buy high and sell higher. Well, right now they're getting hurt in their stock market. Commodities are crashing. So, you know, unless there's a banking crisis over in China, I, I don't know that they show up on June 1 the way a lot of people thought. Okay. A lot of people thought. Zero X tech minded thoughts on BTC hash rate way up in China. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> the possibility of Chinese retail pouring into the market is there. The question is, what, will they show up tomorrow? Or will they show up when Bitcoin has better momentum to the upside? Right? Because right now, what you're witnessing is people are selling stocks. People sold bonds last week, two weeks ago. And now I think they're selling crypto. It's a tough environment for super speculative assets. Okay, here's Bencoin. We discussed this. Ray Dalio. Okay, let's look at some bank stocks. This is USB. Okay, US Bank Corp breaking support at 30. Now, just note this is what happens when you get consensus trades. Okay, up, 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 squeeze. This is a 90 minute chart, and then boom, right? They really they make it so hard to be short. Now, this is SPY. Okay, uh, there was resistance at 426. They ramped it up here really good, and then they dropped it. Can S&P get past 426 or 4,260? Okay. My guess would be no, because everybody's like, NVIDIA saves the world. Okay. But a dollar in stocks is better than a dollar in the bank. Goldman Sachs could break down if it falls below 323, although that stock has been in a range. Now, Tesla, okay, just going to pull Tesla back up here and correct this, okay? Did Tesla take out 150? I just said, it's a rhetorical question. Where would Bitcoin be if Tesla took out 150? Because this could be, one, two, three, four, five. How bad is this liquidity crunch? Well, we'll know if it starts affecting Tesla. Now, do you have to go out and go, oh my God, now? No, but I'm bringing this to your attention because there are indications in both bank stocks and stocks like Tesla that you've got some very toppy action. Now, the old question is, does anybody sell? Is sell in May and go away? Do I have to put that away? Perhaps, you know, obviously this year and maybe forever because it happened the last two years. Okay. Just thinking that this liquidity crunch is not the greatest thing ever. It's not. And there's three things that got to hold up the market, right? XRP has to hold up. Ben has to hold up. And frankly, Bitcoin has to hold up. Okay. Okay. Now, silver. What is working for crypto? Ethereum tends to follow precious metals. The good news is I've got some fundamental information I retweeted from the smartest guy I know, DC. Silver is making a move or could make a move according to my guy. 
Okay. And silver is retesting the top of this big sort of gigantic multi-year range. And frankly, in my opinion, not investment advice could explode at any moment. It was my boss always says in trading, you want to look for relative outperformance, right? Gold is outperforming when all the rest of commodities are getting hammered, right? That's a sign that when gold and silver turn around and actually go up, that they're going to go up massively. Central banks are buying gold. It's all over the news. Retail knows about de-dollarization. Now they know every central bank in the world is buying gold. Right. Every central bank in the world is buying gold and people could just wake up one day and go, okay, this is my new investment and they're going to buy gold. CTAs could also buy gold because what they're doing is they're selling everything that's going down and they could start buying everything that go up. They just follow trends. This trend could start silver. Now, the good news is that would be great for Ethereum. So if Ethereum doesn't complete the head and shoulders top, it will be ironically because of silver. It'll follow metals, right? The burn from meme coins that's happened, right? Now let's, let's go to Bitcoin and Ethereum. So I think the best way to draw Bitcoin is that it's just been in kind of a range, right? Obviously and people are like, Hey, how much longer? And I would say what would be great to end the range is just to go to 24K. Right. It's just to go to 24K. Right. Silver is way too cheap, but things often are way too cheap for a long time. Yes, that's a good point. The cheap get cheaper, the expensive get more expensive. That's an old Wall Street saying. Right. Now, I have another chart, a yearly DeMarc chart that I shared with our trading school uh, over at Emerging Asset Group that, you know, silver could have three or four more up years. And we know Bitcoin's going to have an up year. The question is, you know, did people get a little bit too long too early? Now, on this chart, Bitcoin could hit 24K because you have an A, B, C, D, E correction. It's just a zigzag with more zigzags. You have A, B, C, and then you have these ones that last as a broad range. So the thing that brings the range to an end is like a final heave because I think a lot of people got trapped in long right when I was basically saying sell at Memorial Day. Now, ETH is a mystery, right? There's the head and shoulders top. There was this, you know, robust test of the neckline multiple times. ETH is coming off, but there doesn't appear to be any interest in selling. Now, ETH got burned, but that didn't exactly make ETH go up. And everyone's like, oh my God, you know, ETH, ETH, all this supply has been burned. Yeah, okay, but it didn't rally. So I'm not hating on this. What I'm hoping for is that you get a better opportunity to buy it later. That's what I'm hoping for. Like this is a crypto positive show, right? I want people to see if they can take advantage of anything that happens in legacy to do what you need to do in crypto to like be there when the world changes and people need people and politicians need crypto. Okay. Somebody's asking to show the gold chart. Let me stop the PowerPoint and go over to that. Okay. Okay. So here's what's happening in gold, right? So this is the daily chart. Have I got the screen up? Let me see if I screen up. Okay. All right, here we go. So here's the gold chart and here's the big question. Gold has to take out these lows, right? It's got to get back through those lows. This is gold daily. This is like cash, not futures. Okay. If gold can do that, then gold can start moving. Okay. Silver. Okay, same thing, right? It's kind of like big, fat, green candles. And I really like this Williams Oscillator. Maybe hard to see. Okay, right here, that Williams Oscillator in silver is basically right at zero. Right there at zero. Okay, and normally when you get that, that's when you get a big move in silver. The big down move in silver came right here. Okay. 
I'm thinking this means silver up just because this is like a give up trade and then boom. In other words, the higher dollar is already priced into precious metals. And that the U.S. government just blew off the debt ceiling. They just blew it off. They just said, oh, there is no debt ceiling. We're just going to borrow another $4 trillion. You know, the administration theoretically could go through that tomorrow. I don't think there's any limit on how much they could spend. And they're not even going to talk about the debt ceiling again until after the U.S. election next year. They've just been like, oh, you know, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> whatever. Okay. You know, th this kind of stuff is, is really, is totally unbelievable. So I know we're jumping around a little bit, but if there was ever a reason to buy gold and eventually buy crypto, this is it, right? Senator Warren calls for shutdown of crypto, okay? Because they think it's funding fentanyl. Now, <clears throat> let's put it this way. If the United States of America, you know, in 1945 or 1944 can land on the beaches of France and beat back an army that had superior armored vehicles, okay? And we can do things like help rebuild countries or execute major wars or do these, you know, huge undertakings, whether you like them or not. You telling me we have we can't stop this fentanyl thing that's just killing people indiscriminately in this country, and that it, you're, we're going to listen to some senator blame crypto for that? If this is what they have against crypto, the fentanyl thing is their fault. The primary job of government is to protect the people. If you cannot protect the people, do not blame a private sector foreign exchange and technology mechanism. This is why it's like, you know, get me an RFK shirt after what I heard at Bitcoin Miami. I'm done with this. Absolutely done. Like the good news for crypto is I don't think politicians can make it go down anymore. Right. They're going to ban crypto and push it outside the country. These people who say these things, they're a joke. They are a joke. Okay. Okay, Brick Dream says, hi, long time no see. Is Chinese liquidity a fantasy? I, I don't think it's a fantasy, but I think you have to be careful of expecting that right away. Now, back to news. Okay, Chicago PMI unexpectedly plummets. So this is a purchasing manager's index. Basically, it measures economic activity in the Midwest. It's usually not manipulated by the government like the employment statistics are. Okay, so you got really kind of a toxic cocktail here in terms of like the economy falling out of bed with rates high as Uncle Sam is sucking all the money out of the market. Like the only reason I can come up with to sell crypto is that people just may need liquidity. People may have to start making student loan payments again and institutions, if they can't borrow money, they're going to have to get dollars somehow. And if that rocks stocks and bonds, crypto gets dragged along with it, which is what we're basically looking at right now. Okay. JP is asking about the Tesla chart. I, I covered that. You just missed it. Let me put it back up. Okay. I, this is kind of a rare case, I think, where you know, what, what goes on in, in things like Tesla actually matters for crypto. So in Tesla, it could be one, two, three, four, five to a new low. So the answer to your question is, uh, I don't want to buy anything at resistance. I don't. Tesla, not Tesla. I do not want to buy resistance. I want to buy support. Now back to technology. Hey, I just wanted to make this note. This is a little bit. Well, let me not judge it. Let me just give it to you. So back in 2008, that was the heyday of the BlackBerry, a device you did email, texting, and phone on, and then you carried your music and movies on your iPod. Now, 
BlackBerry actually topped out. It went up 25% in the first half of 2008. According to ChatGPT, the high was 147 on June 18th. Okay. June 19th. So this was the BlackBerry top, right? And then on a weekly chart, this was S&P in 2008. The market went down, range traded, and then later crashed. What's my point? One stock cannot save markets. Like NVIDIA is like the AI trade of all time. Now, I think there are other AI trades. I would rather do AGIX, but everybody did the NVIDIA trade. And with NVIDIA worth a trillion dollars, how does NVIDIA save you now? It doesn't. If those down, that could be why. Now, let's talk about total three. Total three is very simple. If Ben doesn't kill meme coins, Ben has to help meme coins. If XRP holds up, you ready for this? ETH, Solana, and friends can hold up. If the Bitcoin network gets slows down, anything fast has got to hold up the market. If that's not what happens, then total three is vulnerable, right? It's just, it's vulnerable. Not because I don't like all coins, not because I want to be a big grouch. Because if you have less money available in the system, that hurts speculative altcoins. So, I mean, the Fed could come in and rescue everybody by flooding the system with money, right? But that's going to be seen as like, I don't know, it's going to be a little bit too convenient for the Fed to come in and print right as the Treasury's got to come borrow money. I mean, the debt deal has no integrity as it is. So this is temporary, right? But it could last all month. Right. I, it's like, you want to go, I, I say I in July and let it fly. Right. See where this is in July. Cause again, you know, crypto has an incredible use case. Total three went down and didn't bounce. So total three has got to get saved by Ben or XRP or total three is not going to get saved. And again, we're back over here on Ben. I mean, you know, it doesn't matter whether you like the project or the person or the whatever. The question is, what is the leader in the market? I don't know that it's Pepe anymore because it doesn't have mind share. The two coins with mind share are the XRP rally. I did a TikTok on it and got 14,000 views. That's a lot for me. Okay. And then you've got this four hour chart of Ben because, you know, BitBoy is just trending every single day. This, this, this coin really hasn't moved in like two or three days. I mean, this coin is the mind share of crypto, like it or not. Okay. Now let's go see what we got in the comments. Okay. Rave song records is here. What's up? Steve J the debt ceiling raise will start a domino effect of nations entering an era of hyperinflation. Okay. Um, I think we're about to enter an era of deflation. Okay. Deflation. Because the economies, like, they're literally going to just kind of fall out of bed. Now, here's QQQ. Let's just try to look at a four-hour chart, right? So this is a four-hour chart. And based on my math, even though it's, it's D-Wave, right? This is, this is one, two, three, four. And here is your very emotional five wave top complete with an exhaustion gap, just like they would have in a technical analysis textbook. Now to Steve's point, man, it's all about gold. It really is. You know, I, I know this did not have, you know, th this actually came off of its high probably because commodities as a whole, I just got to believe it's gold and silver. And of course, you know, based on where I work, that I'm thinking gold and silver and water. Now, to take Steve's question, he says the debt ceiling raise will start a domino effect of nations entering an era of gold as the world's reserve currency with crypto riding that wave, right? In other words, nobody thinks a reserve currency should be made out of paper. 
I don't. You either want to have something scarce like Bitcoin or you want to have something like gold. Gold as the world's reserve asset. The other world's reserve asset, water. You want to check out the Zero X Gold Retriever Twitter feed where we're doing, you know, philosophical videos on the actual meaning of gold and water in human history. I know. I know. This is a crypto market channel. And yes, this could be the big theme in crypto. Right. So I work there. I own the GLDN and Bark tokens. Okay. So I don't want to go BitBoy on it. But I do believe that these themes are really important. And I do believe it is important that gold is up today, even with all the other commodity markets getting smacked. Okay. Matthias is saying dollar up only. So let's take a look at the dollar. Let's look at the 89 minute chart and see what we got. Okay. So this is DXY 89 minute. Sometimes you guys like to see me draw charts on the fly. So let's do that. Hey, you know, this is the other thing with crypto. I mean, this also can, can put a, a you know, I'm not, I'm not going to be stupid. This, this can, this can put a damper on gold and silver. I just think gold and silver are a lot closer to a move higher than say other asset class like stocks where their moves may be ending. Okay. So I'm looking at DXY and I'm trying to find what would an upside target be. I'm using hidden pivot analysis. So let's try this. Kind of like this. Okay. Okay. So DXY has got really good support at 10427. I think if DXY is holding 104.27, you have to be skeptical of what's going on in crypto. Meaning, you know, with selling Memorial Day and go away, there's no gigantic rush to be long crypto. Okay, possible upside target for DXY at a tactical level is 104, 105.40. Okay, if I saw that, that's where gold, silver, and Bitcoin would come into play. Okay. A lot of people took profits in the dollar and I get that. I get that. I mean, it's not like people have not known about this funding problem. The dollar has essentially been going up the entire month of May, right? That's why Bitcoin has been in a range. Now the dollar is not going up because people are in love with the United States, love the dollar. They're buying the dollar because they know they may not be able to get it. I mean, in economics, I'll save you having to major in it. It's called crowding out, right? Literally, the government is going to crowd out the private sector. And don't forget, the government is taking all the money away, okay, right as the Chicago Purchasing Managers Index is falling out of bed. Now, I've got one other thing on money supply that I do want to share with you, okay? I do want to share this with you, okay? I'm going to actually read it, right? Now, this is about getting ready for deflation, okay? Slowing money growth is now interacting with higher interest rates. According to a major, oops, right, right. No, not sharing screen on this one, okay? This comes from Trend Macro. Slowing money growth is interacting with higher rates and the result is contraction. Now, get this. M2 has shrunk 4% in the last year. That is the only contraction in M2 money supply, M2 in U.S. history. So there's not a lot we can predict here, but it would be extraordinary if such a contraction didn't result in deflation, right? Just as large money supply increases two years ago resulted in inflation. So no stimulus payments, money shrinking, people putting their money in the, in the bank, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. No money growth, no economic growth, no economic growth. What happens to stocks? Okay. Right. I mean, 
Is it good? I mean, does crypto need less money moving around? I don't think so, right? So it's, again, what is the idea of the liquidity crunch? Okay, let's share screen again and let's go back to this. And just one other note, just some minor wah on my part. Having to talk this way about crypto sucks, right? Like, I want to. I want to buy all the crypto in the world and, and just sit on it, right? But what I don't want is to get stopped out, right? Like, for example, if you fought NVIDIA, Kathy Wood sold her NVIDIA, wound up with a negative headline. If you fought BlackBerry back in the day, you got stopped out. Now, I remember when BlackBerry had its earnings call and Oh my God, you know, it was the crowning achievement of BlackBerry. And I was like, oh my God, right? Right. When everyone gets the same way on anything in these crisis environments, look out. And it is so hard to wait to do the right trade. So hard. Steve, I have not forgotten about REQ. I wrote it down. Okay. ETH, you have supported 1854. That's pretty much got a hold. There was no interest in selling it down there, but there's got to become an interest in buying ETH. You know, I like this, that, that uh, ETH is being burned because of meme coins. Okay, well, now would be a good time for ETH to go up because that whole rally got unwound. This is why I'm, I'm, I'm saying, hey, altcoins, uh, maybe we got to think about this. Okay, Bitcoin on a four-hour chart. There's nothing much going on here. It's at support. Okay, if someone comes in and buys Bitcoin today, that could be healthy. But if you look at plain Jane sequential, you know, you had a 13 top in Bitcoin over the weekend, right? What do I always say about holidays in the U.S.? You get these sudden moves when nobody's paying attention. And as it turns out, when you look at a plain Jane version of DeMarc work, it was the 13 top. Now, the 13 top has produced a result. So if you're taking out 27K in Bitcoin, you know, it could be this simple, right? I mean, you know, it's not ridiculous to say Bitcoin, you know, hit hit 31K and then did an A, right? A B up here, right? That was over the weekend. And then C is normally down here below the A at like 24K. And A, B, C, you know, I drew A, B, C, D, E earlier, but, you know, D wave is great. DeMarc's Elliott wave tool is awesome. Right. So, I mean, you know, I want to buy down here. And if Bitcoin's at 24K, where's the rest of this whole thing? Now, I did talk about XRP, but I didn't talk about XRP here. So let's talk about XRP. Okay. We need XRP to save the whole market. Okay. So this is four hours. Wow. Look at this. Right. You have a 13 top, you have a nine top. It comes off, but then there's buyers here. Okay. In other words, when, when I say that this could be the big moment in XRP because of what's going on with Jupiter and if Ripple Inc. is not the seller, in other words, who's the seller of XRP? There's the 13 and the 9 top right at the same time. Who's the seller? What if the answer is nobody? I could show three more up days looking at the XRP daily chart. Now, just a little interesting piece of trivia. I'm not going to show it, but XRP is now at 52 cents. If you go back to 2021, you know where XRP was? 52 cents. They say the bigger the base, the higher in the space. I mean, if there was ever a need with the Bitcoin ordinals to have a transactional currency, with RFK Jr. about to, like DeSantis wants to abolish the IRS. RFK Jr. is going to vanquish the SEC and pass legislation to help people keep their crypto. You know, XRP loses the lawsuit, they win on appeal. Meantime, people need a fast version of money, right? I mean, if, if XRP, if XRP wins the legal case and Walmart or Target decides that they've got to lure people back into the store, right? You want to get people back into Target? Start accepting crypto. You want to get people back into a Target? Start accepting XRP. 
especially if they win the lawsuit. People are saying, you know, people have these huge, grandiose upside targets. You know, I, and I don't, I don't agree or disagree. I'm just saying, all right, well, if that's ever going to happen, when's it going to happen? When? Well, you need a, a, a Jupiter expanding everything moment. You need a monetary revolution, which is also in the GAN work. If XRP is a part of the monetary revolution, it would be hysterical if the whole crypto market went down and this was a one coin market on the way up. Am I out of my mind? We will see. We will see. Okay. Robin's gold position was off to a nice start today. Okay. Again, QQQ, you know, I, I don't, I don't know about this. I don't know. Wrong again, sinks 26.3 on June 3rd. Okay. Okay. Language trainer is asking me if I think a rate hike is priced in. Okay. That's a good question. Let's go over here. Let's go back to the DeMarc work. And let's go to TLT. Okay. TLT is the long bond ETF. Okay. So here was the nine bottom in TLT. This is the bond market right? The long bond. Now here's the resolution of the debt ceiling crisis, which sends everyone covering, but really what's happening with TLT is it's coming back and attacking this huge zone that it was consolidating in. So right now TLT is at 102.81. The question is what happens at 103.50? So this may be the situation where when the fed hikes rates, one of two things happens, okay? Either the banking system breaks, which, I mean, that feels like it's going to happen anyway, or the credibility of the United States breaks because of the amount of debt that has to be issued, right? And God forbid the inflation numbers are actually showing that you've got slowing economic growth, but they can't stop inflation. I mean, they're rioting in England. Strikes are at an all-time high. Food inflation over there is at 15%. 15%. Right? So is a rate hike priced in? Probably. Right? A rate hike was definitely priced in down here. Right? Now they're unwinding that. The question is, can bonds recover? Okay. I think bonds, TLT is going to come in here and fill this gap. And then bonds are going to go back down again. This is one of the things is why I want to buy crypto in July, right? There's going to be a rise in rates and then crypto turns around, goes down and then goes straight up. I'm looking for the V bottom in crypto. Okay. Somebody wants to now Steve J says pump on the rate hike. Yes, because this is the last rate hike if they're doing one, right? And if they don't do one, you notice something wrong with the banking system. And on that note, we should probably take a look at bank stocks. Just, the way I look at it is just across the board, right? So, you know, U.S. banks, big U.S. banks down 2%, right? Normally, it should be long Bitcoin, short the banks. Both banks and Bitcoin are down 2% today. Somehow, commercial real estate wound up closing higher. That's IYR. I don't know how that happened, right? It's just like, it's like fantasy land, right? And then I, I did bring up Target the other day. Just in case you think there's no, you know, there, there's no social discord in the United States. The 62% retracement of the multi-year rally in Target is 132.56. The 2019 high was 130. Target closed today at 131. You know, if there was ever a reason for crypto, this is it. Target and Bud Light are examples of disharmony. Crypto is about harmony. Even if one coin competes with another coin, you give me that over what's going on with these other projects. I'm going to say with these 
other companies and politics any day. Now, some final words on support and resistance. Okay, on a 90-minute chart, you've got to have 26,700 hold. ETH, don't forget, you've got to have 18,400 hold. I'm going to go to a 90-minute chart in XRP. Okay, the level in XRP that held was 50 cents even. Okay, I, I like the D wave here in the sense that you had this five wave trend ending move and then you had the corrective flush for the A and someone came back and bought this. Like if something's going to save crypto from, you know, of course, saving crypto means more crypto in a range, but XRP is it. Okay, JP's been stacking Tesla and Soul. Let's check out REQ. Steve J. Okay, request network. Okay, so with stuff like this, you know, where you have a long term base, what I would say is this doesn't look liquid to me unless I've got the wrong thing. Okay, so not financial advice from Steve J. Okay, here you got a 13 bottom and you didn't get a rally which led to more range trading. You got a 13 bottom over here in March. Okay, this is a weekly chart. Well, what I can say about this is, you know, this is value investing. But I mean, seriously, like, I think even then is value investing now that it's come all the way back down. The question is, as we said earlier, do the cheap get cheaper? If this ever took off, the question about, REQ is, is there a catalyst? Okay. Silas says we don't want to miss out on an entire crypto bull market. No. Okay. No. Hey, okay. somebody mentioned Solana. Let's bring that up. Okay. So I'm not really liking Solana on a weekly basis. Sometimes I think if there's a case to buy Solana, it's either at you know, at, at 16. Okay. Or at 20. It's kind of weird. They can't get through 21 and they can't touch the support at 20 either. It's like, I don't know. It's like caught in the ether, you know, conceptually, I, I actually like Solana, right? Like fast, like, I don't think if they can actually fix the network, no one will remember that they had problems with the network. All they're going to care about is that it's fast. But at the moment, again, it's caught in the altcoin vortex. So on the way out, okay, we have Bitcoin down 2%. Okay, going back to the watch list. Bitcoin's down 2%. ETH is almost down 2%. Right now. The question on any down move is, is there follow through? There could be. Okay. Let's just look at an 89 minute chart of Avalanche. Okay. Where should the trend in Avalanche end? Okay. So. I found some good news in altcoins. 14 is a big level in Avalanche. Oh, I know you had to wait an hour for that, but you can add Avalanche to the list. If Avalanche holds for 14, and XRP is still rallying, that saves altcoins. And I think Ben's got to hold up too. Now, if Avalanche falls below 14, then I think you got to seriously think about getting out. Right. Sell in May and go away is in effect. Now, maybe it's sell in May and go away and come back like, you know, first week of June. <laughs> I don't know because a dollar in crypto is better than a dollar in the bank. A dollar in stocks is better than a dollar in the bank. The question is, does everybody know that already? Okay. We'll be live tomorrow. That's the market update. We'll see you then.